What's up, ballers? Coming in hot in full effect, live and direct from Los Angeles, California. A sunny Wednesday morning. Rolled right out of bed to do this intro to get the podcast out to the masses. Before we get into this week's episode, I want to give a shout out to my Patreon. What's up, Patreon? Sit down, Zumok. Patreon.com backslash sit down, Zumok. I want to give a shout out to two Patreon people, supporters. My man, Jose the Banker, who upped the ante. I see you working, Jose. Thank you for your support. Chuck Blywise, new to the Patreon. Welcome to the family, Chuck Blywise. I hope I'm saying your name right. If you want to sign up for additional content, updates, info, giveaways, ticket giveaways, meet and greets, go to the patreon.com backslash sit down, Zumok. Uh, I appreciate all the support. Building this brick by brick, the pirate ship. And then we're going to float the hell out of here. I'm also doing a new thing I want to do every week because I'm a comedian and this job is hard. It's difficult. You battle everything. You battle the audience. You battle management. You battle battle managers. You battle your peers. So there's people that just plug along and a lot of people give up and they move on. And it's it's a hard job and I don't blame people who want to go into another profession. But one guy who continues to fight, a guy who I like, I've I've uh, known for a long time, back in my hometown, Cleveland, Ohio, a guy who's doing big things and continues to do big things and move forward. He moves forward, and I've always had a good relationship with him. It's at Rob Ward Comedy on Instagram. Rob Ward from Cleveland, Ohio, funny comic, doing big things. He's going to be on Kevin Hart's Heart of the City this next month. I don't know when. I think he said something in June. But Rob and I, we've worked together. We've been friends for a long time. He's uh, he's he's one of the good guys in the industry. So hit up Rob on the uh, the Instagram, or as the kids say, the gram. And as douchebags say, slide into his DMs. Ugh. Uh, <laughs> leave a comment. Five-star rating, bitches. Come on. Go over the iTunes. Help me with the algorithms. I don't know what that means, but let's get this thing rolling. I am fully committed to the Sit Down Zumok podcast, and I appreciate all your support. If you can hit on my YouTube page, you can also listen to my podcast on YouTube. If you have an Android, it's youtube.com backslash adventures in Argyle off my first album, which you can get on iTunes. It's a shout out to the sweater vest. All right, let's get into this week's episode. Oh, yeah, I got tour dates at chadzumok.com. I, I'm performing a lot around Los Angeles. It doesn't matter. Let's get to this week's episode. I'm excited to have this guy on. I've been playing phone tag with him for a while. He's a, he's a friend of mine. I've known him for a while. We both have radio backgrounds. we both got to stand up. Uh, we're both living in Los Angeles. This guy's doing big things. We talk about it on the podcast. Um, if you're a Buffalo listener he's a familiar for he's a familiar voice as i by the way this is 8 30 a.m this is very early for me so forgive me if my voice sounds like i'm uh some fucking radio hack uh he's a he's a familiar voice on the shred and reagan morning show from buffalo he's also uh one of the uh cast member slash producer slash stars of your mom's house on uh tom segura and christina p i can't pronounce her last name she seems not i just met her last night actually at the comedy store sam tripley's comedy chaos very nice lady um he's he's a funny comic he's a good dude solid dude and um i wanted to have him on the podcast it was a great conversation long conversation hope you enjoy it again leave a five-star rating hit subscribe Share this bitch. That's a wrap. Sit down, Sonic. Hit me. Sit down, Sonic. Okay, joining the podcast right now. I have an intro, so this is not like some weird cold open. No, that's cool. 
Did you test my levels? Check, check. Oh, Hello? dude, I, I have these <laughs> levels set like perfectly. Dope, dope. Is my good friend from the Midwest living in L.A. I don't count Buffalo as the Midwest. You don't? It's We don't count it as the Midwest. We're, we say East Coast. I never got the Cleveland Midwest thing. You guys, uh, sometimes you're like, we're Midwest, and then you shit on New York teams. You're like... The, you know, we're fucking on the East Coast, too. It's not like you guys are the big city all the time, you know? Yeah. It's a weird thing for me. <laughs> you're, like, in the middle. I lived there for a little bit, so I remember that mentality. You know, yeah, you're in the middle. I just don't get it. Does Cleveland want to be a big city, or do they want to be Midwest? I think we want a little bit of both. I think we're insecure. We don't know <laughs> what we are. That's a good point. I, th- I really do believe that. I'm not joking. I, I think there's a weird insecurity of what we are. We want to establish ourselves. But we had that the whole mistake by the lake thing for yeah. a long, long, long time. And and then we have, you know, we had the brighter situation with the NBA championship with the Cavs and the you know World Series. Yeah. But I don't know. I have no idea. Because Buffalo, we're we're more, I guess, delusional. We're just like, we're not fucking Midwest. We're East Coast. <laughs> don't lump us in with that trash. Are you from Buffalo? Yeah. Born oh, and raised, baby. 30 shit. years. Shit. Why? Well, no, the cool thing about my podcast is I blow up and as I blow up, as I get new subscribers. Right, right. I uh, it's not just like my whole Cleveland audience or Midwest audience, but you were a guy who was on the podcast a long, long time ago. And, and a guy who's blowing up on his own. I ah, blowing up is a weird word, but OK. No, you're doing, <laughs> no I got a few more Twitter followers. <laughs> no, with, in the podcasting industry, like you are doing really, really well. And I, I'm watching from afar. Like I talked to our Good friend who's been on this podcast a lot, Anthony Lima. Like, oh, yeah, yeah. Who you used to work with at 92.3 The Anthony. Fan. Yes. He's the best. Yeah, and, and you're, you're, doing, you're working, doing the great stuff with Tom Segura over there. Yeah, I'm just lucky that I get to work for uh, a startup thing that's doing really, really awesome right it's now. It's not, so. like, necessarily a startup thing. It's, like, it's a weird... It's, well, in terms of the studio, it, I guess it is. It's, it's startup, startup, but it's, like, if fucking... Some huge comic started. Right, 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 right. Like, okay, I'm of gonna pay course. attention. No, yeah, and I'm very <laughs> thankful, by the way, that he did start it because I, yeah, because now I get to have a have a purpose through the week as opposed to just drifting aimlessly and doing mics and bar shows and trying to figure out what the fuck's next, you know. But I was talking to Anthony, who's going to listen to this podcast because he's a oh, psychopath, of course. totally listening to every word yeah. we're saying. He was such a huge fan of yours from the beginning. That's how I found out about you. Anthony got robbed, by the way, in his best talker in Cleveland thing. Oh, yeah. Well, he, <laughs> he's a great, great personality, without a doubt. We can agree. He's a great oh, radio dude, guy. I said, because Anthony Lima, for those who don't know, is on the morning show at 92.9, the fan. 92.3. 92.3, sorry. Holy shit. I worked there for a <laughs> spell. I don't, dude, that's how What far, are you, Chuck Booms? I fucking blocked that. Part of my life out of my brain completely. But honestly, like if Ken and Anthony were the morning show back when I worked there, I would have probably still be working there because they were fun to like hang yeah. out with. They were my friends there. You they know? were a good hang. Yeah. And like I could work with those guys. For know? my Cleveland audience, which I have still, I still have a Cleveland audience. You were on the Kylie and Boom show. Yeah, for a very... I was at... I was the... I, I mean, we talked about it on one of your old podcasts, but I helped... I was the guy who launched that station in terms of physically <laughs> turn the switch. So it went from alternative to sports, and I was the guy who pushed those buttons. And I remember we talked about this in the old podcast. There's some new listeners since then. Yeah. Um, but they actually... They, they took... It was actually the extreme. It was like an alternative radio show. And I remember I was at war with the Maxwell show at that point. Yeah, they were on down the hall or whatever. Ninety seven or ninety eight point five NCX. They used to be on WMS. We replaced them. They weren't there very long when I got there. But I remember <laughs> Maxwell went to ninety two point three for one afternoon, and they were they were shitting on me in particular. Mm. Just going just at, one, like one, one day. Yeah, one wow, day. Okay. And in, in little they realized they thought they were getting the spot. They were just testing it for talk radio. Mm. For sports That's talk hilarious. Radio. <laughs> well, what's f- even funnier about that is that show got shit canned pretty quick into my time there because the budgets of the shows on our station obviously inflated quite a bit, having, you know, sometimes two show hosts and a, a producer and then a phone screener. The budgets for each show were expansive. So the company's like, we could shed some fat on this classic rock station over here. <laughs> and yeah. they fired his show and then they just put in they put in a guy that's actually 
a really good bro. I wish I could remember the fucking guy's name. Slats. Slats. Yeah, he's, yeah, yeah, he's dude. Good. He's fucking like. Old school DJ. He's one of those old school dudes. Plug Much him cheaper than that show, plug but like and play, you're make good his to own go. money. Yeah, yeah, no, he's so so cool on him. But uh, no, yeah, I, so that that guy got fired pretty quick into my life there. But yeah, Anthony worked I think there. It was the, like Dave Popovich and who were the head guys of my station? Yeah. Dave didn't work for us. He was a pro music programmer, but he was great. He was uh, actually one of my favorite people who, that worked there. Who was the big guy? Like. I can't remember the dude's name, but I know he's on my resume. <laughs> he's he's the guy. He's not York. there. He's not there anymore. Oh, he's not. I don't think. I think he left. Oh, fuck. Got like moved up in the uh, in the but industry. But I remember they thought they were going to bring over Maxwell in the morning, and it was going to blow everything out of the water. Like Rover, look out! We got yeah. the fucking thing because Maxwell was in the afternoon at MMS forever, and next thing you know, it was the it was it was a the biggest piece of shit of all time. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember Louis C.K. ripping on that show, and in fact, Shred and Reagan, the show I worked on in Buffalo, got intertwined with Maxwell for a moment because he kept saying the show was in Buffalo before he said the name of the show. Yeah. So he kept saying the show in Buffalo, the show in Buffalo, and then we got, I don't remember how we caught wind of it, but we are like, what is he talking about? We were right. We didn't do any of that shit. And then... He said Maxwell in some call or something on Opie and Anthony said, oh, that's Cleveland. And so finally, like, the ire stopped coming at us. So, <laughs> but that was it. That was the first I became aware of Maxwell. And then I was like, oh, this, yeah, this is horseshit. And then <laughs> I was like, oh, this guy's down, this guy works in my cluster now. Great. And then he got shit cam pretty quickly. Yeah. And he actually was in the afternoons in Cleveland for a long time. And I replaced him. So I have like this weird. I think there's a weird radio bond between me, you, like this whole weird world. Oh, if of, you do morning radio, right? Pretty much. I mean, maybe not right now. I don't know how it is in the last like ten years. I don't think I don't it's know the way it used to be. It. No. Like when we were on the radio, like it was fucking. You could get more stuff, and like actually, it was we got in the radio. I don't know when you started, but I got in like right 2009. Door closed. I started oh four. Okay, you were in the the heyday. That's oh. not the heyday, though, dude. The fucking 90s is the heyday. That's the shit. That's, that's the, the big contracts. Yeah, man. That's when you were getting, like, six-figure deals still. And, like, yeah. I mean, you were getting some seven-figure deals still. If you were syndicated, you're not getting that shit at all anymore. Because it's podcasting. You have to be fucking and, Like, everything Ryan that's Seacrest. going on right now, like, there's, like... There's so much competition. You yeah, don't... and it's like, well, radio could just podcast also and make the same money. They, they're just not hiring people anymore. They're just not. They're just looking at them like bean counters, and they're being like, how much does this cost? How much are we bringing in? Yeah. And it's like they realize it's a utility that's not going to go anywhere. And they're hiring in dumb radio people from the past. to. They're this... either giving dinosaurs ridiculous money, or they are giving children out of college no money and making it unsustainable so they can't grow as a talent or even spend enough time concentrating on becoming good. You know, it's it's right. all their own doing. They could easily compete with podcasts. And, and in fact, iHeartRadio has some of the top uh, listenership in podcasting right now. Sure. Out of all of them. And so does... Um, there's another one, but I can't remember the name of it. But there, it's still viable. You know what I mean? Like, the sh if you just put on a good show, it can exist on terrestrial radio and then in a podcast world. You know what I mean? And make money in a non-traditional uh, way, you know, for broadcast radio. Well, I think the rules and regulations in FCC is not going to make those radio shows blossom like you would do a normal show. Like, Oh, yeah, of course. Like Tom Segura's Your Mom's House. Of course. You couldn't do any of the shit you could do. On your mom's house on terrestrial radio, more or less. But you could also tiptoe the line. Like, some of the stuff on your mom's house as far as viral videos and stuff like that, we, we did that kind of shit, but we just beeped it. You know what I mean? And sometimes, like, of course, people are like, oh, beeps, boo. But, like, you could be edgy and work within the confines of the FCC, and it's fun, actually, to, like, try and beat those systems by, like, cheating it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, just kind of being clever enough to allude to things without actually committing a finable offense like that was most of the fun yeah. in terrestrial radio that's kind of lost when you have like like that's why i mean even stern said when he went to satellite he's like this is kind of boring because i can just say fuck and cunt and stuff like that and there's no like repercussions there's no danger you know what i mean so yeah but podcasting i mean has taken it to a whole nother level because it doesn't restrict you to how far a transmitter can go and then there's no governing body managing all those trans those transmitters like being like you can only have this blast 5000 watts or whatever the fuck and go from here to here 
And if it goes past Bradford, Pennsylvania, that's a fine. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, but as an old school radio dude who actually was inspired by radio, you like you were a Shred and Reagan fan. Yeah, there were no podcasts when I was no, it was in high school. Or it didn't whatever. exist. Yeah, it was just radio. But now and, a guy in 2019 who is who's not only how, how how many years were you in radio? Uh, for 15 years. 15. Yeah. And now much. you're doing podcasting on one of the biggest podcasts of the world, and you're also a comedian who's loved and respected selling out the improv. Like you <laughs> the did. Lab. Well, let's be honest. All right, we're you're, here. You're humble. Let's not disrespect it. <laughs> let's be humble, but you're. It's you're, not humble. It's the reality. You have a draw. You have a draw, and people like you. But, well, we'll see about that. I'm gonna try and see if that's the case. But a, a, as of right now, like, how do you see that? Like, as a guy who's in the mix of all of our entertainment industry, this is how I wanted it to be. I mean, I thought that's how radio was gonna be, but like I said, the companies that own these radio stations and they're not interested in growing their talent or anything like that. They're interested in how much money did we make from ads? Right. How they much money are fear. we spending? They don't even really give a fuck about the ratings cuz they're very like whatever. It's it's not yeah, it's not fear so much as it's like they're overextended and now they're like, "Well, how do I still get my fucking helicopter and how do I make my six figures?" You know, these are the people at the top or whatever. And how about the shareholders and sure. all of that? They don't fucking care about like putting out content. And that's the great thing about podcasts and like these small uh boutique sort of like production shops, I guess, is that they care about the content and of course they realize the content is what drives the listeners and then you can make some money from that, you know? Yeah. So it's like silly that these people aren't concentrating on the content because if they did, then they could make some money, but they don't see it that way. They're like, how much money can we shed? That's our priority. I'm, I'm, I'm constantly fascinated. This is not funny, any of this. No, I mean, it's, it's interesting. Like, for me, I don't care. Like, I don't give yeah, a yeah, shit. Yeah. There, I hope there's that that weird guy out there that loves this, and there are those weird dudes. I yeah. get the emails. I mean, I have, I mean, I'm sure you do, too. I have severe PTSD, I think, from working in radio in terms of just, like, fear of the future. It is. You know what I mean? I feel like I'm, a, like, a, 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 not a, a broken child, but I feel like I'm an abused child. Like, I feel like I don't know what's going to happen next because of my situation. But at the same time, I'm fascinated because I did love radio. The reason why I did stand-up comedy, and same with you, was because of radio. Mm -hmm. I loved Artie Lang on the Howard Stern show. Yeah. And I go, I want to do what Artie Lang's doing. And I pretty much almost did, except I didn't do cocaine, heroin. Right, right, right. Narcotics. But Close. <laughs> I, yeah, I had a lot of booze. You should have did some narcotics maybe in there. <laughs> I feel like it would have helped. But, I, but, 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 but the 98.5 in Cleveland, yeah. which was a station you worked for. I mean, you worked in the cluster of CBS. That was the reason why I did stand-up comedy. That's the only reason I did it. Yeah. And I wanted to go on the radio because of that, and I got an opportunity. Oh, Stern was on that station, huh? Oh, he was huge on I, wasn't, I thought he was on MMS for some reason. I, I don't know the history. Biggest thing ever. Yeah. 98.5 NCX. WNCX, the home of Michael Stanley. <laughs> he came back, too, I think, at oh, some yeah. point. Dude, he was drive time. Yeah. Huge in Cleveland. That's hilarious. So you were a young guy. You loved Shred and Reagan in Buffalo. You, right. You got an internship, and then you got a job. Yeah. And then from there, what happens? I stayed there until 2017. <laughs> from what time? 2004. Okay, that's a long time. I mean, I, I was in high school and I got hired. and uh, Which is unheard of. But I, there was that brief hiatus when I was in Cleveland for Kylie and Booms 90, for 2011. 90, the fan. Yeah. Yeah. That was just 2011, pretty yeah. much. That's just for you, Anthony. Yeah. No, and what I was going to say before about Anthony, he was like... Anthony to his Lima. credit, he was like a weekend update guy. Yeah. Or like just an update guy. In the, I, I shouldn't, I'm not, sorry, Anthony, my bad. He's going to be mad that I said weekend update He's guy. He's totally listening. He was a way. weekend host, and then he would do updates during uh, middays and like early afternoons. Yes. And so I, he was just around, and it was like another young guy. He was funny, and I was like, this guy I can do bits with, you know? And I would have him help me with bits, like voicing stuff or whatever. And then I would play the bits for the old men who didn't understand anything for the who hosted the show. And they were like, sure, whatever. And then they would air sometimes. <laughs> sometimes they wouldn't. And I will defend Anthony on this credit. I won't defend him on a lot of things. But he was always the guy who told me, 
Josh Potter. That's, Dude, we did some. I he wish I, told me about I wish you. we had the tape still. I thought I, I used to have him on an old phone, but him and I did some fucking hilarious bits when he was hosting. Yeah. Like call-ins and fake call-ins and shit. It was like Phil Hendry shit. And it was some of the funnest shit I've ever done. And we only did like 10 of them, but like they were, we still did them. Even when I moved back to Buffalo, I would just call into a show and we'd come up with a bit or whatever. He'd text me and be like, I got this idea. And uh, it, I wish I still had the tapes of those because they they're fucking hilarious. They were so fun. Really? Yeah, dude. I'd like to hear them. Yeah, dude. There was one. Uh, I don't. Johnny Damon played for the Indians at the time. Johnny Damon from the Yankees and Boston Red Sox. Yeah, and uh, there there was this viral video of him like signing a kid's ball from the outfield. Like he yeah. walked up to the wall or whatever, and like reached up and like signed the kid's ball or whatever. And I called in as the guy behind the kid that was that's like angry <laughs> that he didn't sign my ball. And Anthony's like, "What? What did you say to Johnny Damon? Like, how? Like, maybe he just didn't like uh, understand that you wanted your ball signed too." And I said, "I'll t- I'll do it exactly the way I did it." And the way that I did it was just like really quiet. I'm like, "Mr. Damon, can I can I have my ball signed?" He's like, "Anthony's like, oh, I don't think he heard you." And I said, "No, there's no way he didn't hear me. I said it just like." And I kept just doing it really quietly. And people thought I was like a real person. <laughs> And they were like calling like this guy's a fucking idiot. You know what I mean? Like it was it's just fun to like sports radio. People think everything is so serious and real. Oh, yeah. And I used to love fucking with that. But <clears throat> they didn't enjoy it. Like the people who were trying to do a legitimate sports talk, whatever, didn't really see eye to eye with me. And I saw the writing on the wall. I'm like, I'm out of here. But as a guy who's been in that industry and sees multimedia and everything that's going on, especially we're doing with Tom's girl and everybody else. Like, do you on it? Like. How, I mean, it was a great time in our lives, but yeah. is it almost archaic how that was? Or? I mean, I would never want to go work in radio right now again unless something drastically changed. Like you know? some weird salary came Yeah, and it's way. almost like I, because my dream when I was started in radio was to be on a syndicated show, to be like nationwide. And yeah. I feel like now I'm on that, but it's in was a different sh- was platform. Was Shred and Reagan ever syndicated? Was no, there were some sniffs, but uh, ultimately... They found success in working out of Buffalo. They're extraordinarily successful. And very popular with comics. Men. And, yes. and, and, and cool. Yeah, they're it's good at what they do. do. Yeah. And they they both had tumultuous careers coming up in terms of like, you know, is, uh, is this going to turn out good or is this going to turn out bad? And then they get put into shitty positions. And once they came together, they were put together by... They didn't even know each other. They were just put together. Oh, that's the, the history of Shred and Reagan. Yeah, yeah. They... They finally, some guy was just like, let's put these two together, and it took off. Really? And then they were like, okay, we're cool with this. This is good for us. So it was the opposite of me and Alan Cox, because we were put together, and it it was like fire and lightning. and just Dude, most radio duos, by the way, hate each other, for the record. Yeah. Like, most of them are not even in the same room. Shred and Reagan, to their credit, uh, they work literally from where you and I are in an office every day. Right. Which and, is um, which is like three feet apart, and like they're not best friends. They don't like hang out, whatever. But they understand that they need e- need each other, or they this is how they got there together. Right. And why bother being separate? And this is our show, so they get along in a business aspect. And so many of these guys, I don't understand it. They're like, I can't even be in the same room as this motherfucker. And then they're like skyping in, and the show obviously is different even right. though they don't allude to those things that fucking bob and tom dudes they don't even like each other they don't even <laughs> speak me. the one dude skypes in now they just use his laugh on a button like it, well, what you the know, fuck I, are they doing i've had a very memorable bob and tom story yeah you used to do that shit right a lot and i was actually up for the job but January- for the job of what to be it would be bob and chad or some shit <laughs> or chad and tom what's the job well tom is still doing this shit Bob is retired. He's yeah. Made, he's the mustache guy. Yeah, yeah. He's yeah. made the money. He's good. Amazing laugh. Great dude. Yeah, they've got him on a button. His laugh is so good, right? That's <laughs> he's a hot key. They're like, we we need that laugh. Let's just take tape of it and put it on a button. Everyone says sitcoms are like dead people. The laugh tracks. Now they've got what? What? Tom's gonna die, and they're gonna just be like, yeah, sure, we got this button. We're gonna have to keep playing it. Josh, you might be burning a bridge right now. I don't... Who, for me? I'm never doing that fucking show. I used to shit on them. I've shit on them since I was 16 years old. I don't fucking care. Talk to me about burning bridges over here. 
I'm, I'm, you're worried about my bridge with Bob and fucking Tom? <laughs> the one guy's reduced to a button, and you're worried about that shit? You're fucking over here attacking dudes with 5 million Twitter followers, and you're worried about Bob and fucking Tom. The Bob and Tom army, I don't think it's very, like, boisterous right now. I found my soundbite. <laughs> <laughs> fucking Bob and Tom, dude. All those shows hate each other, though, dude. It's like name one, and they fucking hate each other. Opie and Anthony, I mean, how fucking crazy is it to come out that like they didn't like each other or speak to each other since 1999? I know. I know. And then this whole time, they're supposed to be like the honest radio, and then this whole time, they were just like little pissy bitches behind the scenes. It's well, they're, they're, make, they're trying to make it work because they, there was a lot I of, get that part of it. A ton of money involved. Dude, I totally get that part yeah. of it. But to, to like put up the air of like... We're the honest ones. And then they did all that Jocktober shit. And it's like, someone should have been Jocktober in that shit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Well, I was like, like even when I was on the radio, I'll, I'll just say, I, I was making I was making almost 100000 a year. Yeah, you were on the fucking show. Yeah, so I, I knew the salaries. That's what kept me in the game. Yeah, I hated and you're the guy. in market fucking 59 yeah, or some shit, and, 62 or some shit so, like that, no, right? No, or what, I, is, what is Cleveland? I don't even fucking know. Fucking who knows at this it's point. It's a little bit higher than 50, maybe. Yeah, it's Sorry. a it, and it's, a, it's a very, with all due respect, it's it, they're, they're a very loyal radio market. They're oh, loyal. yeah, dude, yeah. yeah. But so you look at Obi and Anthony, we're making millions and dollars from Bob Eatman. yeah. And That's crazy that he repped you, by the way. R.I.P. <laughs> R.I.P. Big Bob. I went to his funeral. You know, Trent Reagan were repped by him for a little while, too. Not yeah. to talk about their business. Super but. agent Bob Eatman yeah. is gone now. Yeah, he's dead. Yeah, he's. Uh, I went to his funeral. It was in L.A. Yeah, it was last year, right? Yeah, yeah. I went to it because uh, he didn't necessarily rep me because he wanted to rep me, but Alan put the kibosh on it. Did you rep Alan? Yeah, yeah. He like he said it was a. Uh, that's how loyal he was to his clients. Yeah, was, that's a good spiel to tell you because he's like, Chad, I can't find you any work. Is bad to say. Well, no, he, <laughs> he he wanted to make he wanted to like get money out of MMS. He was just like, yes, yeah, okay, I got your I got your back, dude. He goes, oh, I see. When you were under contract, that's a. Great I was still way under contract, but he's like, he goes, I want Alan's approval and mm-hmm. Rover, who's his guy. So he wanted their approval, but they, I didn't get their approval because radio guys are insecure. It is what it is. It's amazing that he repped all a bunch of people that just hated each other anyway, though. They all hate each other. They didn't really yeah, do. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rover and Opie and Anthony and fucking the dude. I forget who else. That Woody guy out here. Uh, Woody out here. Yeah, he's, yeah, still he's cool. Charlie. He's cool. I don't know anything. Have you met him? I've never met him, but he's. I like his work. As do you well. should get him on a fucking Segura's podcast. Uh, we'll see what's up. I don't know. You know? <laughs> I've never uh, met him or anything, but I've always like, been like, oh, that show's cool. Let's go on the Woody show. You I'm and me. to do radio for sure. Let's go on the Woody show. I can make that happen. I'm down. I, dude, when I first moved out here, I was like, should I get a, maybe I can get just like a production job or something. And then I was like, Why? Yeah, you know, I know they're not going to pay me anything. In this day and age, you're, dude, you're, you're fuck- no one. No one who, even if you have years of experience, like this is all we can pay you. You know, it'll might pick up. You know, something. You know, they always tell you that kind of shit, and it's like, no, it's not. It's never going to pick up. I know young comics. How long have you been doing comedy? Um, ten years now. Okay, less time than radio. But I'm in sixteen now, and I'm not saying I'm older than you, but whatever. We're like peers, but. There are comics who would murder. No, you're definitely older. They, they, I am older. In comedy, I mean. In life. Well, yes, I know that. Too. And <laughs> they would murder to get where you're at, to open for Tom Segura and be on this yeah, fucking s- network. People say that all the time, and it's like, murder. I understand. Murder. I completely understand, and I'm thankful and all that. Yeah. Um, and I... But at the same time, I'm like, I work really hard. No. <laughs> so I go like. You're not just a guy who's got handed something. You're talented. <laughs> yeah. You're talented. Let's get that out of the way real quick. I'm not just saying like. you're. No, just, of course. Yeah. And then when, so when people say that to me, it's like, well, you can do it too. Just fucking do it. You know what I mean? Like, I hate these people who. Do you ever come across these people who are like, man, I want to do comedy. And uh, how do you start? And you tell them like, go do an open mic like yeah. right now. Like, go tonight yeah. to do an open mic. And they're like, well, you know, I want to start, like, really think about it. And it's like, okay, write down what you think and make sure you do it. Because, like, guess what? The first one doesn't matter right. in any capacity. If it goes good, it doesn't matter. If it goes bad, it doesn't matter. Because you have to do it a bazillion more times. Right. So you might as well just get that first one out of the way, like, right now, if you really want to do it. And they're like, okay. And then they drag their feet. It's the same thing with people who say that kind of show where they're like, I'd kill to be where you are. It's like, okay, then go for it, dude. Like, do it like I if you because I'd kill to be a certain things and I'm and sure. I will kill for those you know what I'm saying not literally but that's the whole point like 
I'm just going to go out there and do my shit. And, no, no, no. Uh, uh, and, and please don't take that as disrespect. I'm not taking it as I'm just saying to you, like, it's just a silly thing to say. No, like, <laughs> a guy who's paid his dues, done his thing, and got rewarded, which is for anybody in any profession, you should be thankful and you should be uh, uh, inspired by that. And yeah. you're one of those guys. You're like, I did this. You took a chance. You moved. Out. You had a nice paying gig in at Buffalo. I did you, not have a nice paying gig. Well, <laughs> I got paid horseshit, and well, I should have gotten paid a little bit more money than I made. It was a paying gig, and it was a salary that I could make working at fucking, uh, you know, doing a desk job somewhere anywhere else. So I was happy to make some money. It was like an average. You know, I wasn't rich from it by any means, and I wasn't even. I didn't like, know that. I wasn't even. I assumed you were paying. You were paid well. I wasn't paid well at all. Oh, uh, and yeah, no, that was always the thing. That was always the thing, dude. And it's like, you could say I have this success or that success, or I've got this or that until you have fucking money. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. in my opinion, because it's a failure. It's like, oh, I'm, a f you know, that's right. the whole point about doing right. If you really want to do fucking radio, you can. I did from high school. I was in high school. I got a job in high school, which is unheard of. Yeah, but it's heard of because I did it. You know what I mean? Yeah. I just wanted it. And it's like, don't let them it. say no. Yeah, I mean, it, I just didn't go home. You, you know made what yourself I mean? undeniable. I guess so. But at the end of the day, I never made a great deal of money to show for my efforts. Right. So at the end of the day, I consider radio being a complete failure. Did it teach me things to get me to where I am right now and, uh, you know, work with you know one of the best comics in the country and like also live in LA and all of that of course so in the long run it was fine but like I don't consider my radio career a great success by any means I mean for a guy looking on the outside looking inside it looked like you were very successful I have, <laughs> well thank you it seemed like you were doing... I was struggling oh okay. <laughs> everyone knew I mean I made it apparent it was in, like part of my identity in my mind I thought you took this this huge risk I'm like okay he's moving to LA I mean it was a risk in terms of like I was getting a steady paycheck I was paying my bills I didn't live lavishly I right. also didn't live in a way where a girl's like oh shit you know what I'm saying like I was fine but it wasn't like I was I wasn't even making I'll just tell you what I was making. I was making like forty grand a year. That's not bad for Buffalo? No, yeah, for Buffalo, that's the thing. It's for like Buffalo is a single you man. Could, yeah, You're doing you, all right. And exactly. I'm not like doing any I would dress however I want. And then you can go do stand up on the side? But at the same time I was like on it. I thought like I'm the night jock. Yeah. And I'm the production assistant, and I'm also I know people the morning show. But I had like six jobs, man. Yeah, and like I watched people when I first worked there individually have those jobs and get paid forty grand each. Yeah. So I'm thinking in my head, like now I have six of these jobs, and I'm making one salary. That's great for the guy upstairs who fucking gets, uh, you know, a Mercedes and some shit. You know what I'm saying? Right. Uh, you know they can still keep paying operations managers six figures but i'm doing six people's fucking jobs and i'm still making one salary and that's how it always would be and that was how i had to survive i had to keep absorbing responsibilities to not get fired essentially because right. they would fire then they'd if you can only do one job guess what you're fired because josh can do like six jobs you know what i'm saying yeah. like so it was that's the nature of radio of course and it's like i had to do it to live but I don't consider that a great success by no, any means. No, no, no. But but I'm all I'm saying is in radio right now, as we speak, because oh, I know a lot a, of people yeah. make a minimum wage. Dude, that's literally the thing, yes. minimum wage. And that's not a new thing, by the way. They've yeah. been making minimum wage for twenty years. They've been throwing that at people. So Hell, I remember they, when they slash Josh Potter's salary, there's a guy who's making minimum wage doing what you were doing. Of course I can't even imagine that poor. True guy. story. And, and sure he's I'm sure that they didn't heap all of my things onto him, but um, or whomever, I don't know how it's working. If he is doing all those jobs, I'm certain that they <laughs> that they gave him less money, and I have no evidence of that or anything. So right. I don't want to speak out of school. No, right? You maybe have... maybe they're giving him more money. I have no. But you know how about. radio works right now yeah. with all the industry and how it's going down. You got iHeart who's bankrupt. You got Cumulus who's a, uh, what is what is Shred and Reagan on right now? They're on what do you mean six Look, to ten network. Oh, they're on Cumulus, yeah. Oh, they're Cumulus? Yeah. Like, with all due respect. but No, yeah, no. It's 
Cumulus is going to, you know, they bankrupt. Uh, yeah, they they did. Love you, Troy I, Hansen, I don't but know, sorry. I don't know any of the... I've shed my um, but I'm just brain saying, of like, all of that, so I don't even know where they are in No one's getting today. a bonus pay plus. No one on the talent end of things in yeah. one market, no. There's a reason why Opie and Anthony are out of business. Programmers and um, people above them of, are getting probably raises and things like that, but no one in the... No production assistant is getting a raise. Right. No you one's know? getting. Uh, I had to. I had to leave or threaten to leave to get any raise at all in my tenure. I'd probably, if I didn't leave for Cleveland, I'd probably still be making like twenty two grand a year or some shit. You know what I mean? And now in the like comedy world, like Josh Potter, like with Tom, is like it's a it's a big thing. That's a huge name. I hope. So. I hope it's it's a good name. Something. Like you're so, it, so far. I, I feel know. like you on Tom Segura Network is bigger than you on. With all due respect, to Shred and Reagan. Oh I have, no, one million percent. It's like and huge. That's that's, on, that's nothing to do with Shred and Reagan. It has everything to do with the fact of they're in a Buffalo morning radio show. Yeah. No. Exactly. Yeah. So you're on this national exposure, right? Which is huge for you. No. Yeah. Of course. I, I I just I'm just I'm trying to point everything out like on the grand. Spectrum. I'm sorry. Yeah. 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 I'm not trying to like uh, diss Shred and Reagan. Or, no. I understandably. So. No. No one's saying that. And they're um, great. With all you know. Due respect. Yeah. It's so weird to think about the like whole like. But you gambled on yourself, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Yeah. To move out here, I think anybody who moves out here, you did too. I mean, shit. I mean, anybody who takes the leap. And gets out of their comfort zone. How many comics do you know that live in your fucking city still and they just don't do anything? You know what I mean? Yeah. Like in that and it separates you. I feel kind of on an island amongst my my peers. I really only have like two guys I can talk to about moving to a new city to pursue comedy because either the others who have tried to do it quit or the others that I came up with don't even try to do it. You right. know what I mean? So it separates you and it puts you on an island of sorts, you know? But what you did was different because you had, even though it was forty thousand year ballpark, yeah, it was comfortable in Buffalo. You can live, and you you would, you would work at the Helium whenever you wanted. Oh my god, that part was really comfortable. Which is great. I and, didn't pay for a fucking beer. My old which existence is one of, there, which <laughs> is one of the greatest comedy clubs of, in the country. I, like, yes, I amazing. love that place. I to, to this day, like I have had the most amazing sets at that club, and the city is great too. And for you to just say, oh, this is very comfortable. Let me just try this. And you didn't know, like, even though Tom was hot and doing his thing, you didn't know what was going to happen. Well, he straight up told me, in fact, dude, this was the night that I taped your podcast at Helium. Oh, wow. I didn't know this. I, I mean, yeah. I mean, I didn't realize it was tied in. It was kind of. Uh, what year was this? I don't remember. It was, you were in town for a weekend with, ah, fuck. Who would it have been? Dane Cook. No. Uh,. Tiffany Haddish. No, it was a. I've never a opened boy. for any of these. It people. was a dark-haired man. <laughs> Who do you open for regularly? That's like a younger dude. I can't. Not like, dark-haired man. Yeah, what the fuck was his name? Sam Tripoli. It's a a good comic. I no, nah, it's like Eddie. Not Eddie. Eddie if, Ives? Was it Eddie? Would Jim have Florentine. Him? It wouldn't have been Florentine. I would Godfrey. Have that. No, I would, let's Godfrey's go on the list. He's African American for the record Um, because it's a 2019 podcast. I can't fucking remember. I'm sorry. All right. Uh, But anywho, you were there that weekend and I did your podcast and like, I remember I was just getting to helium and Tom texted me. He's like, so when are you moving to LA? And I had never even like thought about moving to LA. He had like thrown that at me and a couple of times in conversation. I laughed. I would always plan on going to New York because I had friends there. Sure. I thought that's where you go. Matt Bergman. No, he lives in DC actually. Matt Wayne. Um, is he Matt Wayne now? No, Matt Wayne is a, co- a different Buffalo comic that lives oh, in New York. That's okay. my friend. But Matt Bergman lived in New York for a minute and then lives now in D.C. Shut up, Matt Bergman. Yeah. But anyhow, he texted me like, when he moved to L.A.? And I was like, I never even really thought about moving to L.A. And he's like, well, if you move to L.A., I'll give you the rest of my tour. And I was like, well, I can't say fucking no to that. So like, so Tom said this to you. Yeah, the night that I... Did your podcast <laughs> really yeah yeah did he listen i don't i don't know that'd be cool if he did. <laughs> but so yeah no he said shout that out tom segura uh, i've opened for that tom. was the impetus for me to move here was because and it, there was no guarantee beyond that it was just the end of 2017 you know like three months of dates and it would help me get like kind of a nest egg to like get a place here or whatever but and, you rolled the dice because santa is like rolling oh dice. yeah dude and like dude he didn't it's not like he i it's not and i don't ever ask or anything but it's not like he was like doing a lot of gigs in 2018 when he was like filming. Yeah, he wasn't in Tom like he wasn't like Tom and Burt right now. Yeah, like, it wasn't like in terms of like 
you're going to be fine for a while. It was yeah. like, this ends January 1st, basically, because my tour is over. Tom was doing well, but he wasn't like, I, I got you. I got a no, network yeah, and, coming. And it's not like I don't got Dr. Drew coming right now. Well, no, and I think that would be ridiculous for anybody to be like that. You know, like, I got, you know what I'm saying? Like, I have to stand on my own two feet. So sure. it's like, this will help you get out here and get a place or whatever. He didn't say this to me, but this was like what I pretty much gathered from it all. But he gave you the confidence. Yeah, and I knew I'd have money coming in and I could get myself my feet planted out here for a few months. And then, like I like I said, I wasn't making money in radio that was like to the point where I was like, I can't turn this down. You know what I mean? I was right. like, I'll just get a fucking shit job in, in L.A. doing like regular office shit. I don't have to wake up at 4 in the morning anymore. I don't have to be having... How long did you wake up at 4 in the morning, by the way? For 15 fucking years. But, although there was, a, there was actually a six-year period where we were afternoons where it was... And I know you did it. Which Shred, afternoons Shred fucking, Reagan was writing? Well, when Opie and Anthony came back to Terrestrial Radio, yeah. we got moved to afternoons. It was kind of a thing. And um, really, yeah, and it turned out to be a failure on the part of the company. But how long was Opie and Anthony on that station? Six years. Really? Oh, no, 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 they were on. They weren't on six years. Excuse me. They were on for like maybe a year, two really? years, maybe oh, at most. Didn't work. And then Shren and Reagan were like, "Well, we're not fucking going back to the morning now. We're used to like the afternoons are like our lives are chill." And so shit. Uh, O and A were in the morning. Yeah. Ooh, that's a terrible morning show. Well, that's what they were live. That's when they were live. You know. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. Then Shred Reagan stayed in the afternoon, and then when Cumulus bought the company in 2012, they moved Shred and Reagan back to the morning, and that's when they hired me back, actually. Like, I left when it was Citadel and came back when Cumulus bought the company. And there's still Cumulus. Yeah. That's just for radio nerds. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But so, when I was in afternoons, that was fucking amazing, dude. That's oh, when dude. I started doing comedy, and that's when I got a DWI. <laughs> that's the same with me. I, yeah. <laughs> Same with me. <laughs> yeah, afternoons are fucking doing mornings. That'll stop your unless you're a real maniac. That'll stop the DWIs real quick. <laughs> two thousand nine to two thousand thirteen, it was the greatest. Like at that point, even though I had my inner turmoil with Alan, like it was huge. No, that's like, the thing. It's a fun fucking job. That's dude. what makes you be able to like forget about the like shitty parts of it. Do you know what I mean? Because yeah. you're like, what do I do really? Yeah. What do I really do? I mean, I go to work every day and like make fun of shit and I, like, I would drive away from there kicking the wall and I've talked about An to Anthony Lima everybody else and I'm thinking to myself I'm making really good money to do nothing like why am I doing this <laughs> yeah dude it's it makes you look I mean Puts my thing was my, I, I, I think about our departures from radio often actually because we had different ones and I feel bad for the way yours turned out yeah yours was pretty good well, yeah, because it was my choice. I decided to do it. You didn't. You you were. It was taken from you. I mean, one could argue maybe you took it from yourself to a degree, but yeah, you didn't want to leave. I I, I did. I you know I'll fight that. That's another t conversation. Well, okay, no, I know what you. I here's what I I'm gonna predict what you're gonna say if I can. You're going to say you were looking for an out because you didn't like working with Alan. You wanted to do your own thing. I did, and I, I but I still wanted the money. Yes, and that's a tough how. way to figure that out. Exactly, yeah. so you, you killed it, yeah. Yeah, no, no doubt. I get that part of it. And that's what always, when you're in it, and then it's taken from you, yes. you go like, fuck, why wasn't I happier? And I put <laughs> myself in a horrible position where you know, I, I was charged with a DUI, and... That was the news story, but there was more to the news story, mm. and I've talked about it at nauseum. I don't want to get into it because no, it's sure. over. Well, that's what's also shitty. When I got mine, I was on the radio. Yeah, but no one ever found. It. I, I didn't. Mine was maybe not didn't have the fireworks quite like yours in terms of like a car accident or what have you. But I, no one found out. Well, you it talked just, about that on Sickler's podcast, the Honeydew. Yeah, you talked about your DUI on. Yeah, there. I talked about it on stage. Like I even was doing it on stage. I let like a once all my shit was cleared up because like you know I didn't have a license I had to do all the programs or whatever, and uh, once it was done I I talked about it on air I was like listen I've regretted I'm a piece of shit like yeah I've never come on here and said I wasn't a piece of shit yeah. you know I made a mistake and I hope I never do it again you know I just hope to be better now, and that was the end of it, I did a couple of uh, they didn't require that I do this but I did a couple of like, um like appearances at a fucking thing for. Mothers Against Drunk Driving or whatever, sure. you know, just to like, to clear my conscience, I guess, you know, 
and I didn't do anything. You know, I got pulled over and the guy's like, I smell alcohol on you and I fucking got arrested. That was about it. But I still felt like, I don't know. I got away with something kind of at the end of the day, even though it was expensive, <laughs> very expensive. But like, I think about things like, cause there's people like you. I remember when I was in Cleveland too, there was another guy who got like an OVO or some shit, whatever they call it in Cleveland. Uh, one of those things. He was on the radio, one of the news guys and he got shit canned immediately. I can't remember the guy's name. Chocoletti. No, it was a big guy, big guy OVO. on one of the news things. Fuck. on like TAM or whatever the fuck. TAM. WTM isn't that a station? Yes, uh, but I can't fucking remember who it was. It might have been not even have been an on-air guy. It might have been like a uh, programmer, or like a fucking operations manager or something. But he got Joe shit, Law. He got shit canned immediately. Joe Law, no, he's fucking <laughs> like a weekend like hobbyist. No, he? he's got like a construction job from what I understand. Yeah, he always has had it. I met. I know Joe. I met, yeah. I, he worked with Joe. He's like a filling guy for us. I don't know who the other guy was. No, it was fucking. I don't remember either, dude. It doesn't matter. But he got fired. I saw all, I saw people get fired all the time for doing less. And I was like... And radio is the shadiest market. Everyone's doing shady shit in that fucking yeah, market. Yeah, I guess if it made the news... If it made the news, I had a plan. You yeah. know, I was like, I'll just own it, dude. I'm... Yeah. And if they want to fire me, they can fire me, but... Which is interesting with me is they try to make me in some Ted Koppel. Like, I'm Russ... Like, some sort of, like... like I'm oh, a yeah, that's the comic. thing. You're like, I'm a fucking... I'm on the fucking rock station. I did, like... I'm an fucking, idiot. I do bar appearances where we fucking yeah. make girls show like wet t-shirt contests and shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like Artie Lang's my hero and he's in he's in rehab right now. Yeah, <laughs> think of all the trashy shit you do in radio <laughs> at bars all the time. Yeah. You're like, yeah, I fucking we, I hosted a jello wrestling contest <laughs> last night. Yeah, I know, I know, it's true. I'm not a fucking news guy who gives a shit. Even I know. the news guys who gives a shit. The guy's just re it's not like he's making the news, he's reading it. <laughs> They all used to get fucked up. Let them get torqued. Who gives a shit? You think Murrow was fucking dude? I even a know t- like teetotaler. But honestly, between you and me, I know local news people. They like the they le- fucking rage. They're fucking. I hammered. dated local news people. They fucking are. The girls are. Some of them are fucking whores. They're going, it's <laughs> yeah. true. They'll go to the local fucking pub and just get hammered. Oh and- my god, they're some of the biggest party and and they're cool. Like I yeah. like that. I'm not. No, dude, I'm all. not shitting on them at all. But yeah. I'm saying, like, local they, news people, if you can hang out with them, you should. You should, because they're like, whatever's going on in between what they're doing, they're married, they but they don't give a fuck. Yeah. And they're doing whatever they want to do. We're all radio and <laughs> local TV people, lowest rungs of show business, and everyone knows it, and we're still in it, kind of, you know? Yeah. And it's like, let's fucking. People love to rage. Like, <laughs> communications it's fun. Majors are the biggest partiers there is. That's why they get into it, because it's easy. Who was that? Was the girlfriend on? If if you're listening from the Honeydew, you had a girlfriend that that wasn't the same girlfriend. No, that was from the news. No, another one. No, this girl was not on the news. The one you was there another girl you dated from the news? Yes. Oh, different girl. Buffalo girl. Yeah. Hey now. Oh yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's fine. She's married and shit. Good yeah, for her. They're all married. God bless. Of course. That's the thing that they do. They uh, they are in. If you're, if they're not, if their heart's really not in it, if they don't Ooh. have the passion for it, and they're just pretty women. They do the local news thing, and then they realize, like, this is for the birds, and they just marry a rich guy, and they, then they can get out of it. <laughs> I am the rebound guy for sure. Like, I'm like, oh, this, this seems like fun, and next thing you know, they're married. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's how it happens usually for me, too. I don't mind it. I'm not going to get married. So it's like, hey, you've, we had our fun, and now you got to go find what you were looking for or whatever it is, and I hope you enjoy your home with children and stuff like that. People do. I'm, it's not for me, <laughs> you know? Well, Josh Potter, I have oh, a, yes, I'm sorry. I have a, no, 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 you're fine. Are we I, done? I talked about radio the whole time. No, it's it, <laughs> no, because I have such a, like a lot of my audience is this, so they're going to love it. Okay, it's, cool. I, I knew that because I have a top five list of com, or, or not comics guest. I got Josh Potter. True story. I'm on the top five. That yes. can't be fucking possible. No, because I saw the numbers from the last podcast, so I just look at the numbers and the lips in the count. Oh wow! A lot wow. of people seem interested. DJ Lord from Public Enemy, who's okay. going to do the podcast. That's cool. He's kind of cool. He's the DJ. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have uh, Annie Lieberman. Annie's going to do it. Annie Lederman or Letterman. Lederman. Whatever. Whatever. The you fuck said her. Lieberman. Whatever the fuck her name is, she's doing. She's the- great. She's great. She is yeah. funny. And then the, um, who was the other one that was up there? I'm talking. I'm not talking about the big names. I can say Michael Rappaport, Dane Cook. I'm not going to get them. And I'm, no disrespect to you, but no, I, yeah. I have a feeling since I have a relationship with these people, I can get these people. Yeah, yeah. So Of course. No, Annie's great. 
Um, yeah, who was the other one? Did you did you have a fifth one or something? These are top five already been on. Well, I just look at these numbers. And I just add the, I, I put them on my notebook. I'm like, okay, this is what people email. This is what they want to say. Mm-hmm. And when you did your honeydew, which you can go back and listen to on Ryan Sickler's Your Mom's House podcast, they're like, you should get Josh Potter on. And I emailed like three people. I'm like, I've already had him on. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. So okay. people he, are going through the backlogs. Then. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, I've already had him on. Go listen. I go. Okay. You know what? I'd like to have Josh on. He's a Midwest guy. He's my friend. I like Josh. <laughs> so uh, yeah. that would that would be an easy podcast. That'd be fun. It'd be fun to have him on. And yeah, no, for sure, dude. Anytime. I and, love podcasts. No, I'll you're. I mean, you're a radio guy. I, like, I gotta hang. I wish I was like here. I, I've never been in this room of the improv because I like hang out here. But it's like a. I hang out just like at the bar, like a ghost. I feel like. And then since I did the show at the lab. And sold it now out, people by are, the way. Yeah, now people are like, yeah, you're like, I told the guy at the door, I was like, I'm just uh, here to do Chad's. He's like, yeah, you're just go inside. <laughs> you like, oh, sold okay. out a fucking show. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even, I still feel like a stranger here. I dude. love the fact that you have this, this popularity about you and you're not aware of it. I love it. It's not that I'm not aware of it. It's like, it's all ridiculous, dude. Like, it doesn't mean anything until I, not for lack of a better word, am wealthy. In my eyes. I got you. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Until I'm like comfortable, I won't go like, this is good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I don't think you should. You know what I'm saying? Like, because it'll make me keep like trying to work, I guess, you know. But I want to get to the point where I don't have to worry about money. And then I'll go like, okay, yeah, I did it or whatever. But and right now, Twitter followers and Instagram followers, dude, it's fucking bullshit. It doesn't mean anything. It's like, it's a means to an end. I like it. But in this helps, dumb but... industry, like what we're doing right now, yeah. this dumb radio... It means something to them. To so people who can help you, it means. I guess something. so, but at the end of the day, I think you still have to be funny, and you have to like go out and. Do but you're this funny. Shit. And no, talented. no, I'm not. That's the part I'm not worried about. Really, is like I know that I'm going to go out and do the sets and do the work. So it's like, I always was like, people are going to find me that way, one way or another. Maybe not like mass audiences, but like the right. funny people will f- see me, and I'll get my shot. You know, like I wasn't always like, why isn't this club working me? I was always like, they'll work me. They'll yeah. figure it out. Yeah. And if they don't, I'll fucking crush them. At, <laughs> is it at Josh Potter? At J underscore Potter. Terrible at Twitter. At J handle. underscore Potter on everything? On on Twitter. And then on Instagram, it's just Josh underscore Potter. But I'm like the it. only one. I know. I, I It's been this way for whatever, and I'm just going to keep it that way. I feel like people use Instagram now more, maybe. It's like a thing. And I, it's like I was they late to the game on that, The ones the who use Instagram don't really use Twitter, I feel like, or vice versa. True. Either you're into the poison of Twitter or you're into the like fun of Instagram mm-hmm. and that decides what kind of person you are probably. <laughs> so what, what are you, Twitter or Instagram? I love Instagram. Twitter, I use it for necessities, but I think it's fucking poison, dude. I got gotcha. you. Do you got YouTube or anything else? I, uh, I'm on, I just go to your mom's house podcast uh, studios on YouTube and just subscribe to that. That'll help me more what's, than What's everything else. on that channel with Tom and uh, We have Your Mom's House, the, the main flagship show, of course, that started it all with Tom and Christina. And then The Honeydew with Ryan Sickler, which you were on um, right before it switched to video, unfortunately. Huge fan. I know. I was like, like right on the <laughs> Yeah, you were the one right before. Um, but regardless, you can listen to Chad on that. Yeah. And uh, that's filmed out of there now. And then Dr. Drew After Dark, which is just unbelievably blowing up which i am shocked and not shocked i'm not shocked but i am but i am like it is alarming that's all where you're just like no shit okay you know what i mean like not in a bad way alarming but and i'm horrible at shutting down podcasts because that's a whole i I could have talked to you for hours by the way yeah no that's but you used to run the board out for love line right yeah dude yeah that's how that's one of my first jobs was so dr drew is in your backyard now you guys are now i work directly with him which is insane and you were running a board (laughs) out for love line which was a nationally syndicated show throughout the country and people would like my buddy eddie ift or daniel tosh would fill in and talk and hang with dude i wasn't like when i say running the for people who maybe don't know i was in buffalo one of the mark one of the many markets love line was on and at 10 p.m or whatever you just have to basically turn on a satellite and then run local ads over the national ads. Like the ones that they'd play, they'd go to commercial break and it'd be like... That was it. It'd be a tone and I would just have to play commercials over the tone. Yeah, it's a timing thing and whatever. It's just a button pusher kind of thing. Board hopping, really. And uh, that was my first... I was 16, you know, I was doing that every couple of nights and building from there. You gave me a lot of opportunity to learn how that board works. So, did, you you know? ever get, did you ever get the conversation with Dr. Drew about that? Yeah, uh, we did it on the air, actually, as really? a matter of fact. 
Um, Where on, can I hear it? I want to hear that. It's the first episode of Your Mom's House filmed out of the new studio. I can't remember the name of it, but it's the one where we brought in Dr. Drew and Sickler to talk about the shows that were going to be. So it was the last time Dr. Drew was on Your Mom's House. What, what, so is it like I can go and backlog that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. And you talk about it? Yeah, we, we bring it up. And, uh, What's Drew say? Not to give away. Ah, he doesn't really give a shit. <laughs> <You don't care. laughs> yeah, yeah. He, but I actually, um, I don't know when this is going to come out, but I'm going to be Tuesday. I'm going to be on the guest on Doctor Drew after dark on Friday. Then, so get the fuck out. Yeah. So Tuesday, okay. Friday, okay. This, uh fuck. How? Okay. This is coming out right now as we speak. I'm very unprofessional, but it's a podcast. No, that's cool. Today's what Wednesday. So this is coming out April 30th. I'm not this week, but next week. Oh, wait, wait. So April 30th, This you will hear Josh on Dr. Drew After Dark on May 3rd? Yeah, audio comes out on Thursday nights, and then uh, the video gets posted every Friday at noon Pacific time. And you so. talk to him, and you have a conversation? Yeah, I'm the, I'm the guy on the show. The That's guest, fucking the guest, great. The, the guest on the show. Yeah, I did. So now I've done the rounds, I suppose. With, I'm happy for you. Yeah, and I'm, I'm on uh, your mom's house pretty frequently, so you can Absolutely. check me out there, too. I, I, dude, I get tweets about you which is that's the irony oh, of this tag I'm, me what's up <laughs> i'm very happy for you josh thanks man no i'm uh it's great that you're back out here i know maybe you're like regretting it but <laughs> I, no, i'm fine i know i had my, my pat oswald thing i'm fine I, yeah, I, everything's good. good like everything when you look at everything on social media it's it's not what it is behind the scenes so no of course dude yeah and it's like yeah you know, i it's everyone's fine <laughs> it's not a big it's deal. A, it's fine when when you got Joe Rogan coming up. Do, and by the way, I never met Joe Rogan. But yeah, yeah. He goes. Oh, he said something to you about he goes, it. He goes, dude. What, what's what up with you and Pat Oswalt? I go. Ugh. That's hilarious. And I'm like, no, it's stupid. He goes, dude. Build your own pirate ship. Just build it. Yeah, and yeah. Fuck it. And for a guy who just like, eh, fuck that guy. I'm like, dude. I'm I'm all right. I'm cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Are you going forward going to be like, who gives a fuck what these retards tweet? I, at this point, you know, you get a little sensitive to it, but not, the, I'm not talking about Ben Oswald. I just mean the haters or the oh, dude. I, or, I mean, we we both have we have um, what do you call it? We have uh, trolls, trolls, haters. and we have the hater. We we've dealt with this. So well, everybody does who has to has any sort of yeah. So if you have like five thousand followers on Instagram, people are going to shit on you. Yeah, so you get a little like stagnant and like immune to it and. But when when yeah, Pat just, came out with you with five million, it was dude. Oh uh, yeah, I know. That's talking about I mean. they're digging up shit on me. I'm like, holy shit! So at one point, you you got a little overwhelmed, and I, I had to shut it down for a minute. Right. And that was and with all due respect to Pat Oswald, he was swinging his dick like he's oh, like, of course. Look but at me. You, what if you were him <laughs> and that and that and you tweeted something to like say you're Pat Oswald and a comic tweets something like that to you. Do you not swing your dick? Well, here's the thing about this situation, Josh. I didn't think he knew who I was, and no, of I don't think not. I don't even think I'm in that like. Ball but say you are. I don't think I'm on his radar. What if you are Pat Oswald? I'm saying sure. Okay, and some comic who you don't even know, not on your radar, yada yada, like you just said, does that? Do you not try to destroy him? There's a couple of things that have been gone very unnoticed for sure, like some like personal thing. I'm like, I'm not touching that. Fuck that. Right. That's just me. I'm being honest with you. No, I'm saying the I'm roles sure. are reversed. This is a hypothetical. No, I want to be. I want to be hypothetical right now. I really do. Yeah, yeah. So you're Pat. Because I don't Oswald. hate. I do not hate Pat Oswald. Of course, but so you're Pat Oswald. You're successful. Your life is crazy. You're on Twitter, or whatever, and you see some guy. Like, say you're Chad Zumach, though, obviously, but you're just in that success realm, and you're on Twitter, and you see a guy who's like a comic, who's like you don't know anything about, but whatever, you don't know anything about him. Sure, and. Do you not go like fuck this guy? Like, I feel like you would do that to a comic, though. Can't you relate with him in a, to a degree? There's two comics particular that I know who have said some personal stuff, and I just ignored. Yeah, because I knew what they were trying to do. Now I don't know Patton's mindset. I don't know what he was doing at the time. I knew at the time I was annoyed. I, just, I, I was like, I'm gonna tweet this at him. I never thought he would respond. I really didn't. Right. And then he did, and it became a back and forth, and it got uglier and uglier and uglier. Um, but I can see both sides. I really can. I can see where he's coming from. And there's a reason why I actually sent a DM, which I did mm -hmm. to Pat Oswald saying, Hey, I didn't mean to bring that. I didn't want this to become what it was. I apologize for what it became. Did he respond? Never. 
But I will say this, 100% to my mother's grave, he was looking at every single one of my Instagram stories. Mm. So he saw it. Because why are you looking at my Instagram stories? Right, 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 right. And that's not a lie. That's a truth. No, of course. And like, I know a lot of successful show business people. I don't know them, but I've heard stories that they are more petty than they maybe should be. Sure. Um, and I'm not saying he's not funny or... No, of course. It's just a personality trait. He's but what I'm saying is like, do you not see yourself in his shoes doing that to somebody though? And just being like, even if it's like, it seems ridiculous to you right now, could you not see yourself doing that too? I, I, I can and I can't because I don't have a lot. I have some Twitter followers, but like I, I can't get through all of it. Like, yeah. I, I don't... I've had I can't s- imagine five million. Yeah, yeah. Cancer. But it's a... Uh, here's like, the thing that I learned because I'll tell you a little... Please. I had... Very near the time that you had your Pat Oswald thing, I had a thing with. Do you know who Vic Berger is? No. <laughs> Vic Berger is a comedian. Really? But he's yeah. He's got a bazillion followers. What's this? He, well, let me, he does. Look him up um, right now. Yeah, look him up. I don't remember what it is. It's like Vic Berger I V like four. Like Vic Hamburger. Uh, B E R G E R. I think. But uh, V-I-C, B-E-R-G-E-R, right. I-V. But what he is is he's a satirist who does these edits and things like that. Okay. Very endeared on the left because he does a lot of like, he does a lot of shit for super deluxe. Oh. He got pretty viral when Trump first became president and he did some crazy edits of Trump. And, it, oh. and they're very funny. He's very yeah. talented. But obviously now time has progressed. We're in the year 2019. Three years have passed since Trump got, became elected. Sure. And now his... Twitter followers are all left wing, very militarized yeah, types. It's and so he has his own I, audience. And by the way, Vic Berger has seen the ire of the Proud Boys, like oh, Gavin sent people to his house Gavin. and shit. So he uh, he's been harassed by the Proud Boys, like at his home. And he posted a video the one day of. And by the way, for the record, I'm not familiar with the whole Proud. Bo- I know the story. Yeah. But I, I don't know anything about them either. I, I wasn't. A, I just know that. this happened. It's yeah, a right okay. to me. It's so very like right wing, left wing thing. Sure. I, I'm not. I don't. I have progressive views. I've said this a billion times. I've had progressive views, but there are so many things where I'm just looking now at people who quote unquote are progressive, and I'm like, what the fuck's going on? But no, don't I, get me I, wrong. I'm, that I'm, I'm, I think I'm on the same page. That doesn't you are. make me at all like these people who are like the so like ranting about social justice warriors because I fucking hate that shit. That shit too. Thank you. So what I do is all I say. It was a reactionary thing for me. Vic Berger tweeted a video of Alex Jones being like harassed in a restaurant. And he was like more. It was just the sentiment of like more of this. Can I give him a plug? Yeah. It's at Vic Berger IV. It's yeah. Vic Berger B-E-R-G-E-R of He doesn't IV. need the plug. He's got a bazillion followers. Yeah, he has, a, he has like 100,000 tweets. Yeah, so followers. nowhere near what you were dealing with. But regardless. Yeah. So he, see, I tweet to him. I go, do we really want to encourage Alex Jones may be evil and whatever you want to paint him as. Is he, though? Is he? I mean, like, the shit he did with those Covington kids is pretty egregious, so I get where people are coming from where they're like, fuck this guy, let's yell at him in a restaurant. But at the same time, it's like, that's what Alex Jones does, too. You're just being like him. The other, like, you're you're a, a mere reflection of what... Yeah, you're just... Don't you want to be better than him? Yeah. And, like, do we really want to encourage people to go out in restaurants and just shout at people they disagree with? You know, like... At the end of the day, Alex Jones didn't do Covington, so it's like he's going to live in society. If you don't want him to live in society anymore, fucking shoot him or something. You know right. what I'm saying? Like, grow a pair of balls. And, and I get something. this culture. <laughs> I'm not I... encouraging that. I'm just saying, like, they don't do anything about it. Like, you're going to just show up in restaurants and yell at these people. It's right. ugly and stupid, and, like, it makes you ugly. It doesn't... It's it's like there and I got bombarded because he lo- he wrote so would three. You, what, okay, all what, I wrote. To what him, did you say to him? All or, I wrote to him was like, "Do we really want to encourage people to harass people in public more? Like, you are a, you are a person who now did it you, was he did, was doxed and was encouraged to harass him. So I'm like, you should relate with now. This did thing. you tweet that for a reaction or you just like I want this out there? Or what? I I didn't quote tweet it. All I did was reply to him. That's what I did to Patton. All I did was reply to him, and then he quote tweeted me. That's what I three did. Three times, three different tweets, long shit, and it was like basically like fuck this guy, blah blah blah. Yes, and not to, not fuck me, but fuck Alex Jones. And he, oh. into his defense, he didn't like weaponize his following or anything. I got He didn't weaponized. encourage them to do it, but they still did it. And I, for a whole day, I felt like awful dog shit because 
his followers were like up my ass and calling me alt right, which is um, if you ever, dude, I have had so many people call me a soy boy faggot that I wish they could meet these people calling me a fucking. I've never called you a soy boy faggot, but I've called you a faggot. <laughs> I'm just kidding, <laughs> but that's my point. Like, it's just so alarming. It's fucking alarming to be called alt, like to be painted. I know. In any I, way, I got alt right too. I got alt right. I'm like, wait a second. I didn't even fucking vote this last that's election. That's what I'm saying. Like, it's so ridiculous. Like, what else have I said that's I at all hypocrisy. aligns with alt right people? And it's just like I got so angry about all of that, and I wrote Vic a message, and we hashed it out together. And he was like, I feel like shit that that happened to you. I'm sorry. Oh really? Yeah. So no. you got a response? I never got a response. Yeah, we we DM'd on. Uh, on Facebook or whatever. It, well, you know what he did? He saw, he did his homework and saw you were aligned with Tom. And you're no, like, no, no, no. Come on. Maybe. I mean, no, but I don't think he'd care about that. He's very entrenched in his own world. Okay. And I told, and I, dude, throughout our, the whole thing, I never shat on him. Like yours was a little bit more directly. Mine was more just different lines of thought. And Vic and I never even had like, our, like we didn't even argue with each other. It was like, at the end of it, I go, okay, man, if that's what you want, like, it yeah. wasn't anything angry between the two of us, but they, the followers, saw me as this whatever yeah. and decided to attack me even just without his behest. So it wasn't even Vic's fault, really. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's why I don't have any ill will towards Vic whatsoever. Like No. And I, I, honestly, I don't have ill will towards Patton Oswalt. But oh, like, of course, yeah. But I do know what actually happened. I know how the whole process... I talked about it with therapists, my friends... And I've had powerful, powerful comedians back me up on this. So. I know. I, I I mean, if you're in comedy, you know yeah. what happened. It's a, dis- <laughs> it's a discussion. But please follow Josh Potter. This guy's on fire right now. And, uh, well, thank he, you. He's I on mean, I media. hope I continue to be whatever you say so that I can. I don't understand how Oswald you have the confidence in yourself. I have confidence in myself. I just would like to make money. <laughs> you were i mean it seems like you are i I would like to be i want to be successful that's all i I see you doing theaters and running a fucking podcast i want to be sick i don't run it by any means don't even put that out there i'm a very lucky cog in the machine who does anything and everything that you're talented as shit i knew you through anthony lima anthony you're the one who discovered josh potter in my eyes and told me about we did a show together in cleveland when i lived there willoughby no we did one uh it was eighty-seven seven point sound. Some fucking Ryan. No, 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 no. We did one. Well, you were on MMS, and I had just started on Kylie and Booms, Ooh. and it was like Bill Squire's party album party or some shit. And you were like, you had a set at the Improv, and you popped in and did like a set beforehand. Was it the Cleveland Improv? And bumped me. No, it was at a dinner t- dinner supper club. Something I bumped supper you? club. No, I just got pushed later, which is fine. I don't care. I was there. Uh, I've never. Bu- I thought you had a set earlier. You had a set at the Improv afterwards, or whatever. But it was. I remember meeting you at the Willoughby Brewing Company. That was after, Chuck but Bones. we definitely met at this other show too. Because I remember, I'm like, oh, that's Chad Zumark. He's on another station. But I was like, well, we had already gotten it was a Rover. I didn't know how it was all working with you guys in Rover because we had getting all these Rover shit. So I'm like. Ah, oh, maybe he doesn't want to talk to me because of the rover thing. By the way, this podcast is going to get a lot of downloads right now. Go, keep going. Okay, so yeah, no, I mean, <laughs> no, like ro- any new morning show, I'm sure Rover's like, go get them, guys, or whatever, and then yeah. these fucking retards come after you or whatever. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, and then yeah, you just screen the call, and they're like, woo, and you're just like, okay, bye, dude. Thanks. And then I would just get like an intern to screen the calls. I'd be like, all right, yeah, like let them dial their faces yeah. off. Just don't put them in here. And then none of them would get on. And the they're not clever. Like, I dare you to call in. I yeah. dare you. They're not clever enough to figure out how to get past a fucking screener. It's amazing. <laughs> you know the shows that are good based off their listeners' intellect. Um, like the ones that can figure out how to get past a fucking screener. It's like, Jesus, dude. You're not on the air when the fucking guy picks up the phone, you fucking idiot. But anyhow, I don't remember where I was going with that. Oh, yeah. So, like, I saw you at this show. <laughs> and it was like, I had just getting a little. I was just. I was pretty By the way, it took stand-up. years of radio to learn to move my mic away. Like, for years. When you laugh, yeah. When I was on radio, I, I, I was like, Chad can't stop laughing in the mic. And no, it's a natural laugh. So I, I, I pushed oh, the dude, mic. You got me naked over here without headphones. I feel like. I'm going to hate the way I sound. No, you're fine. I got my headphones in. So. Okay, cool. Yeah. I, I hate I, not listening. I mean, people, there are so many people in podcasting and radio who are like, 
uh, do I have to wear the cans? And you're like, yeah, you, you should. Yeah. And it's like, well, I don't like hearing my... It's like, you're a fucking broadcaster. Yeah, you never laugh, though. Put the cans I on. I think you laughed I laugh. three times. Not tonight, I haven't laughed. But yeah. I, I do have a laugh, and I... But when I laugh, I... Because I, 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 I have a pretty... Uh, uh, what's the word? Um, identifiable laugh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've heard you laugh. Yeah. So when I laugh, I move the mic away, so... Yeah, I try You, to you can't hear it, but I can or hear it. Or when you cough or yeah. something. Yeah, yeah. But, uh... Anyhow, yeah, we did that show at the Supper Club. Something Supper Club oh, in downtown. Yeah, okay. In the basement. But yeah, then I then we formally met and like hung out at that Willoughby show. I was I was hammered that night. That's oh, I know, dude. Yeah. yeah. It was Lawhead was there. Okay, they're done deal. He was hammered too. Yeah. That was the first time I met him. Um Jason he headlined Lawhead. it. And then uh I don't really remember that gig. <laughs> yeah, I mean it was not one it was not a memorable one, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean yeah. it was like the night before Thanksgiving. I had moved back home, I think, at that point. Um, and came back. I was coming back to do shows in Cleveland a bunch. You came and did my 87.7 sound show when we were throwing a Hail Mary in my radio career. And That's you brought right. your girlfriend at the time. You had a girlfriend with you. I remember. That's the, that was the broken leg girl. <laughs> oh, who was it? Her name was, uh, I don't tell her name. Well, but she was the broken who? From the Honeydew. Oh, the girl that was in the Honeydew. Yeah, show. we talked about that. Yeah, you brought her with you. That was the same girl, yeah. She was cute. Yeah, she was cool. She was young. She as alive? Fuck. Yeah, she's she's alive for sure. Okay. <laughs> uh, she was so young, it was alarming. Like, I didn't... I remember I met that girl at a bar and assumed she was 21. And then we started, like, dating. Yeah. And then I, like, got her, like... She gave me her license for something or whatever. And I look at it and I'm like, Whoa, wait a minute. What? Like, this is a couple of weeks, so it's like I didn't get all the... Like, how old are you, I guess? I don't know why I didn't figure this out. Yeah. But she was 19 and I was 27 or something like that. <laughs> and I was like... Oh my god! And then I was just like, "Well, whatever." And I was kind of proud. And they're of it. done that. <laughs> I was like, "I'm kind of proud of it." <laughs> yeah. No, man, she's hot. Yeah. So then she broke her leg too, and whatever. But uh, <laughs> you can hear that on the honeydew. Uh, so Josh Potter, yeah. listen to this motherfucker. Are you got a podcast coming? Uh, it's a, there's talks of it. We'll see what's up. We'll see what's up. I'm not going to say anything about that. You're definitely on fucking your mom's house for sure. Yeah, no, I'm. Uh, I'll, you can catch me on that show, and like I said, I'll be on Doctor Drew on Friday. That's great. Yeah, congratulations. Thanks, dude. And Think uh, about that going from board hopping to being on, a guest on the show. That's crazy to me. Yeah, no, that Doctor Drew insane. is world renowned. That's that part's crazy to me. That's though. not like some like guy. I it's, see him like once a week now, and it, I'm still like kind of like in awe of him. And that's he's pretty such, cool, dude. He's such a fucking pro. I can't say enough nice things about. No, I met him guy. one time, and that guy's in the he's in the pocket. Oh my god, dude, he's so good, and he's great at the comics. He loves comics, but dude, congratulations, Josh. Thank you, man. I, I wanted you that. on, and I made this happen after. Well, my, hopefully, I get. By the way, I had a lot of like missteps to make this happen. So. Oh no, I know that. I remember. Yeah, yeah it's <laughs> I true. remember those texts. Uh, yeah, I got more. <laughs> so, <laughs> Josh Potter is a, a friend of mine. I like him very much. If you could support him and follow him on any social media, I think you'll be enjoyed. I think something's going on with Josh that's going to be bigger and better. Thank you so much for listening. Please so. subscribe. And if you have time to go to iTunes, leave a five-star rating and a review. You guys are the best. That's a wrap! Sit down, Zomic. Sit down, Zomic. I've got at least one pair of good shoes in the back of the closet somewhere.